What's up dudes, Peter Von Panda here. Hey, I just ordered this. Uh, you know I like multi-tools. This one's kind of like the mother of all multi-tools. First of all, I'm gonna tell you it's a little bigger than um, I expected, which is good because I actually didn't know how it was gonna work without being kind of big. You've probably seen these. It comes in this like, it's kind of like nylon, but it's almost kind of like it's Tyvek or something. It's like pretty thin, but it seems durable. Uh, this little pouch here with a, a loop for a belt loop, but you can see how big it is. It's, it's pretty big and that's because kind of like a hatchet multi-tool. You've probably seen this is gonna be a true, true unboxing because I have never handled one of these before. They are generally more expensive than a lot of multi-tools, but that is in part, I think, because of how big it is and how massive it is. Uh, and that, you know, this is gonna probably do things beyond what generally your kind of standard Leatherman will do, or I should say more heavy duty jobs. Now. Um, they are, like I said, more expensive, uh, about $25, $30 range range um, is what I've seen. And uh, it seems like it's pretty nice construction. This is pretty thick metal all around. And like I said, it has serious weight. The little hatchet end has a little kind of rubberized cover. It's kind of like the, um, the, the rubber dip that's around plier handles. And this little hatchet blade, which is only like an inch and a half uh, wide is pretty sharp. I mean, that's definitely pretty sharp. And I can see this being used to cut wood actually relatively effectively. We will put this thing through its paces, don't worry. Um, this is just a unboxing and first look here. I'm gonna put that back on so I don't embarrass myself by hurting myself. And then there's a hammer right here, which is, uh, I don't know, about the size of the pad of my finger, maybe a little bigger. Um, and like I said, nice weight, so I definitely think you could hammer things, that's for sure. Now, opening it up, there's a little loop down here, so you can press down this handle and pull this, you know, kind of rigid loop. And now you have uh, pliers, not needle nose, kind of just general uh, pliers. And there is a spring bar there which is how they kind of come back open so it does not appear that the mechanism in here will have a spring to open these back up which a lot of the multi tool pl uh, pliers will have but it does kind of push it open a little bit but only about this much now you have some um, serrations here as well as here for grabbing larger things and then cutters right in there as well so you should be able to cut things uh, this handle is a, is a little thin, or not thin, but narrow, but it's rounded, so it's pretty comfortable. I can tell you it's nice and comfortable, and this is how you would probably want to do it, so that the, the palm of your hand is on this wide part here. Looks like you've got kind of this red woodish uh, side panels on the multi-tool itself, you can see, and it seems like it's real wood. It's almost certainly real wood because it's got a little bit of gap, and... It looks nice and it's comfortable. It's nicely sanded and so it's nice and smooth. Um, and then we have tools inside on this one side. So unlike a lot of multi-tools where you pull the, the two handles apart for pliers and they have tools on both sides, it's only this larger part here. So we can open it up and figure out what we have. Uh, so the first thing is you've got a pretty nice sized knife here, a couple inch blade, kind of your standard. It looks kind of like um, in terms of look and size, like a standard Swiss Army knife blade, right? On the next uh, piece here, we have a bottle opener as well as a wrench. So the cool thing is you can, um, with this little step down hole, you can, you can put this over different sized nuts and uh, twist them open. We also have here a Phillips head screwdriver, which is cool. And actually the flat part here since I just saw the Phillips head, is uh, kind of a pointed, sharpened, but not sharp edge. So that's uh, probably going to work as a flathead screwdriver is my guess. And then we have a saw blade here, which is, oh man, that's probably like two and a half inches long. Oh, you know what? This may be just for like, I don't know, prying things up because there's the, what looks like to be more of that flathead screwdriver. So you do have a saw blade here. Um, no measurement markings on either side, so no ruler type. And then 
you have this serrated blade right here with a file on this side and I think uh, kind of this narrower part is going to be your flathead screwdriver. So a decent number of tools here, you know, uh, and I think the key is uh, it's not the number of tools that make this interesting. It's really the fact that you have uh, these two tools, which is very, very unique for this, a hammer and a little hatchet. And so we'll go out and test it out. But if this is a, if these tools are the things that you really need on a regular basis, I can see this whole tool being useful to you. But if these aren't, then I would say probably your standard Leatherman type tool is what you're looking for. So let's give it a try. All right guys, so I have the tool here and I thought we'd try out this hatchet. Uh, this is a stick, it's kind of standard kindling. It's larger than my thumb, but this is probably something that you would find out in the woods and want to cut down. Now, uh, more than likely this is going to be live and so it's going to be braced at the bottom and you'll be chopping it like this. We'll try that. Let me try it uh, laying down here and see if this little uh, hatchet end is good enough to cut a piece of wood that's maybe about an inch in diameter. So uh, if it's standing up like this and you're giving it a few good whacks, uh, it certainly looks like it takes some take some bites out of it and even though it's moving around on me because it's not braced at the bottom like a living tree would you can certainly cut into the wood now if I lay it down you can kind of cut it like you would an axe kind of cutting a V into it certainly better than having nothing and I certainly don't know how you'd cut this apart with just a pocket knife but you can see here uh, it's probably gonna be pretty easy to break at this point so you certainly can't cut now one of the things that I was thinking about is if you had a piece of kindling or a board or something like that. A lot of times, especially in survival shows, you'll see them kind of take their knife, put it into the, bury it into the wood, and then use another piece of wood on top of it to hit you their knife through the wood, kind of creating like an ax. Now I think the benefit of this is you have a broad cutting blade here that you can wedge into a piece of wood, but then on the reverse side, you have a hammer, so a flat side as opposed to just the, the blunt end of the knife. So you actually have quite a bit of metal up here. So let's go ahead and see if we can cut through this board by making an indentation there and then using another piece of wood to hammer through it. All right, so that's pretty good. Um, kind of looks like sometimes when you're grabbing it, you're pulling this handle down with force and this can open up, but since you're grabbing it, uh, it should stay in place anyway. But note that this is kind of moving around a little bit on me, but that worked pretty well, you know, just hitting the hammer portion and using this to split wood. Pretty impressed with that. Anyway, pretty cool little tool. I'll certainly use it in kind of my emergency packs, but then it'll also accompany me in my next outdoor trip. Peter from Panda out.